Welcome, everybody, to today's bonus episode. I am so excited to announce to you guys that today is the day my book, Level Up, How to Get Focused, Stop Procrastinating, and Upgrade Your Life is out. And so I just want to take a few minutes just to tell you about the book. And if you're interested, allow you the opportunity to go buy it as well. And I would appreciate it if you did. Uh, this book is 17 years of self-development, 37 years of my life, uh, three years of writing, and 16 rounds of edits. And it is now available October 3rd today for anyone to purchase anywhere in the world. And so uh, today I just wanna take a quick few minutes with you just to go through the book, talk about the flow of the book uh, so you know what you're getting, but also have an idea of, of why I wrote the book and why this thing actually exists. Um, but before we dive into it, once again, it would mean the world to me if you bought one of these. If I've ever given you any value at all in anything I've ever put out, over 1,300 episodes, please buy a book, support me, support the show. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Just look up Rob Dial, Level Up Book, wherever you buy books. And so I want to just talk to you about the book because a lot of people ask some questions about it. So first off, why did I write a book? Uh, because I hate writing, just so you guys know. I prefer speaking. It's a lot easier for me. And writing is really not my skill set. But in, uh, in 2020, I had the feeling that it was about time to write a book. You know, I started the podcast in 2015. And about five years into it, I was like, you know what? I feel like it's about that time. You know, 2020 was changed for a lot of people. And so I called up my friend, uh, Hal Alrod. You may have heard of him before. He wrote the book called The Miracle Morning. And I was like, hey, man, like I'm thinking of writing a book. Here's the idea of it. You know, the thing that I said to him is that we're given the most complex piece of machinery in the entire world. And we don't know how to use it. There's no manual for our mind. And so what I wanted to do was create a book that was like the manual for the human mind on how to create the life that you want, how to take action. I didn't want it to be a self-help book at all in any sort of way. I wanted it to be a book where someone could read it from start to finish and go, oh my God, now I know why I don't take action. Now I know I don't have the life that I want. And I've got the step-by-step -step process of how to take the action that I want to, how to change my brain through neuroplasticity, and how to actually create the habits that last throughout my entire lifetime. And so I told this to, to Hal, and he's like, this is a great idea. Let me get you on a phone with my book agent. So I get on the phone with his book agent. I tell him the idea, and he's like, yes, this is a great idea. Let's get you on the phone with some publishers. So then we went through a bunch of different calls with publishers. Ended up signing with one called Harper One, and that's my publisher. And I wanted to, the, the reason why I wanted to create a book was because I wanted something start to finish. I love this podcast. This podcast is my favorite thing that I've ever done in my entire life. Uh, but it's kind of sporadic. Sometimes we talk about anxiety. Sometimes we talk about money. Sometimes we talk about success. We talk about a few different things. I wanted to create a book where if I died today or if I died tomorrow, this sort of thing would live on and people would be able to read it at any point in time and know how to change your life. And what I realized is that everybody wants a better life, but so few people actually go and take action to create the life that they want. So few people take action to create the life that they want. Why do they not do it? And so I was on a trip to, to Sedona with my team. We brought about 10 of my team members out there. And um, I got the, the feeling that I needed to write the book in Sedona or at least start putting it together. And so I told my wife, I was like, hey, I'm going to stay for an extra week. And uh, on the trip out there, booked an Airbnb, stayed for an extra week. And I was like, I, I want to write a book on how to take action. And so let's dive into it. And so there's, there's three parts to the book. The first question I ask myself is if, if everybody wants to take action and everybody knows what they need to do or pretty much most of what they need to do, why aren't they doing it? And so the first part of the book, it's broken up into three different parts. Part one is why you don't take action. Part two is how to take action. And then part three is how to turn your actions into habits. And so part one is broken up into four different chapters, and it's why you don't take action. And so there's three reasons why you don't take action. That's chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three. Why you don't take action. The first big reason why I found that people don't take action is the fears that they have, the fears that they've created, and the fears that are existing in their mind that don't even really exist in reality a lot of times. And so what I keep saying to people is it's basically like we're creating the boogeyman and then fighting the boogeyman all day long and he doesn't even exist. And those are the fears that are holding you back. And so I dive really deep into chapter one in fears and how to overcome your fears. Chapter two is about your identity of who you think that you are because you're going to live in resonance and take the action 
as the person that you think that you are. And so in chapter two, we dive into the identity of who you think that you are, your personality, and how to actually change yourself, change your personality into who you need to be. So fear holds you back, your identity holds you back, and then chapter three is your purpose. The purpose that you have for your life, whether you know it right now, or whether you don't know it, we talk about how to discover your purpose so that that is the driving force behind all of the actions that you take in your life. And so there's fear, there's identity, and there's your purpose. Those are three reasons why you don't take action. So that's what chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Chapter four is visualization, how to put it all together, how to know exactly what it is that you want, and then how to visualize it every single day and to actually see what that future is so that you're not driven away from taking action because of your fears and your identity and lack of purpose, but you're actually driven towards the future that you want to create and you're visualizing it every single day. And so that's part one, which is why you don't take action. Part two is how to take action, how to actually get your ass up and do what needs to be done every single day to get you from where you are now to where you want to go. So that's chapter five. Chapter five is the direction that you're heading, the direction that you're heading, the North Star that you're following and the, the actions that you're taking to try to get you there. Chapter six is how to remove all of the distractions from your life. Because if you're going to sit down and focus, you're going to need to figure out how to create an environment that makes it easier to create action and to take the action that you need to. And what I found is the most consistent people, the people who are, who are taking the most action, it's not that they don't have the most willpower. What they actually have is they've created environments around them where not taking action is not really easy to do. Taking action is easier than not taking action. And so it's about creating an environment, removing the distractions, and creating an environment where you can actually start to take the action that you need to. Chapter seven is how to put it all together, how to put everything together one step at a time to get you go from where you are to where you want to be, that purpose that you found, that thing that you've been visualizing, and how to take the correct steps every single day. Chapter eight, which is one of my favorite, which is focus actually understanding how your brain works so that you don't distract yourself and you start focusing. And so this is where we really start getting in heavy into science and the actual neurology of your brain. I hired a neurologist to go through this book and cite every single thing. Tell me what was correct. Tell me what was incorrect. Tell me what needed to be adjusted so that we can make sure that there is science behind this book to prove exactly what we're saying. And so there's a lot of science that's put into the focus chapter of how to actually get your brain to do the thing that you want to do, to focus on the task at hand to take action. And so that's part two, which is how to take action. And then part three is actually how to take all of the action and neurologically change your brain to be consistent, to take your habits and your take, take your actions and make them your habits. And then how to actually create the action that you want to and make it easy for you to take action through habits versus making it feel like it's a struggle to take the action. And so in part three, that's what we really dive into is how to change your brain to take action. And so chapter nine is about consistency, how to build a consistent life where you're doing what you need to do day in, day out, and you're not allowing yourself to slip or to give up. Chapter 10 is really deep on how to create habits so that you can make sure that the actions that you need to take just become something that you're doing every single day. It's not something that you have to struggle to do. Chapter 11, which is also another one of my favorites, chapter 11 and 12 are some of my favorites. Chapter 11 is neuroplasticity, the science of actually how to change your brain and the proof to show you how to change your brain. So there's many tips and tricks of how to change your brain inside of chapter 11 and how to actually make sure through neuroplasticity, which is the actual science of changing your brain, that you change your brain into the person that you need to be to take the action that you need to. And then chapter 12, which I love as well, is how to create dopamine reward systems, which is an actual system to take the action that you need to, to create the life that you want. So that when you do take the action that you need to, you actually feel good about it. You feel rewarded, which makes you more addicted to the process of taking the action that you need to. So instead of wanting to be on your phone, you actually get more joy from taking the action that you need to to create the life that you want. And so, as I said, there's a lot of science that goes in this book. There's 73 cited studies that are in this book. Uh, I didn't want this to be just a self-help book or a self-development book. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I wanted this to be the standalone step-by-step -step process 
to get your ass up, to take the action that you need to, to create the life that you want. And so uh, once again, this book is out now. It is out immediately. It would mean the world to me if you bought one book. Once again, it is called Level Up, How to Get Focus, Stop Procrastinating, Upgrade Your Life. And uh, that's what I got for you on today's bonus episode. We'll be out with normal episodes starting again tomorrow. But once again, if you just put somewhere in the world on the internet, Rob Dial, Level Up, the book will pop up. And I would greatly, greatly appreciate it from the bottom of my heart if you supported me uh, if I've ever given you any value by buying one copy of the book. Appreciate you. And I'm going to leave you the same way I leave you every single episode. Make it your mission. Make somebody else's day better. I appreciate you, and I hope that you have an amazing day.